and affected. We're also joined by Karen Suckling, executive director of the Center for Biological Diversity. Can you talk about this first anniversary and what we've seen since the massive explosion in the Gulf one year ago today, Karen? Well, the impact on wildlife has been devastating. We've estimated that over 6,000 sea turtles were killed, 26,000 marine mammals, including dolphins and porpoises, were killed, and on the order of 82,000 seabirds. And one of the worst things is, is that the death is still happening. The disaster is not over. So at this very moment, uh, dolphins and sea turtles are still washed up on shore, dead and covered with oil. Talk about the dispersants that were used. Yeah, the dispersants are particularly disturbing because the oil was bad enough. Then we sprayed this highly toxic dispersant on it, which is actually four times more toxic than the oil to many of the wildlife. And so the oil did not disappear, but it was broken down into smaller parts where it sunk into the water column and some places onto the bottom of the sea. And so now you've got this unbelievable chemical soup out there on the order that's never been seen before. There's never been an oil disaster where we've sprayed this much dispersant into the ocean, not knowing its impact on wildlife. And so the dispersant we sprayed out there is also killing wildlife. And indeed, the, uh, my, my group, the Center for Biological Diversity, just filed a lawsuit challenging the continued use of dispersant in future spills because it's a horrific way to address these oil spills. It's all about hiding the oil, not about cleaning it up. Now, you have litigation pending around the dispersants, right? Yes, that's exactly right, because um, despite all the horror that was caused by the dispersants, it's still the government's position that they would use those dispersants on the next spill coming up. Uh, the American public don't know what all the chemicals are in the dispersants. There's never been an environmental analysis of their effects on wildlife and on people. Um, and we're saying to the government, you cannot go forward and use this again minimally until you at least figure out what the environmental effects are, but preferably not to use it at all. I mean, it's looking at ProPublica, uh, which just won the Pulitzer Prize, and another uh, expose. Uh, they write, two types of dispersants BP is spraying in the Gulf are banned for use on oil spills in the U.K., which is interesting. BP is British Petroleum. So they can't use it there, but it's used in the Gulf. As EPA-approved products, BP has been using them in greater quantities than dispersants have ever been used in the history of U.S. oil spills. Karen. Yeah, it was really just spectacular that what happened out there with the dispersants. I think the government was really playing Russian roulette and letting BP go forward with this. And, and you mentioned the dispersants that they were using were actually banned in Europe. So one of the issues they had is they had a large amount of this dispersant. They were banned from using it in Europe, and they had to move it. They had to ship it, and this was their chance to actually sell it make some money on a product that uh, they can't use anywhere else, and so they poured millions of gallons of it into the ocean. And dispersants in particular uh, have a very damaging effect on the small wildlife on the invertebrates. So, for example, the oyster beds uh, were hit really hard by this. And unfortunately, just as the sea turtles and dolphins are still dying today, if we go out and use this dispersant again, this disaster is going to just keep rolling and rolling and rolling. And, and it points to the fact that we have not addressed the fundamental problems with offshore oil drilling. We still do not have a method of containing or cleaning up uh, further oil spills, but yet we're going forward with new drilling all the time. David Pam, 